Okay, so chapter three is when we're going to stop thinking about our angles in terms of degrees, and we're going to start thinking about them in terms of radians. So what in the world is a radian? Well, a radian is an angle with its vertex at the center of a circle that intersects on the arc of the circle equal to the length of the radius that the circle has a measure of one radian. So basically what it's saying is that a radian means that you have one, a distance of one here at your radius, and it's the same measure here on our arc length. On your calculators, you have two different settings. If you go into your settings mode, you'll have a degree setting, which is what you should have been in this whole time, and then you'll have a new setting, maybe you've played around with it before, called radians. Um, that's probably what you're going to want to convert your calculators over into if you're going to be using your calculators for this next section. So everything we're going to do in Chapter 3 is all going to center around everything being in a circle, which really isn't a whole lot different from what we've been doing because when we think about the Cartesian coordinate system and how we've been graphing, we've been graphing from 0 to 360 anyways, which is the same amount as a circle. So we're just going to talk more specifically about the unit circle where we have a radius of 1. So notice that for 360 degrees, that means we go all the way around, which means we have two pi radians for 360 degrees. This is because of the circumference of a circle. The circumference is the distance around the circle. The way to think of circumference is it's basically the perimeter of a circle. It's if you started at one point on the outer edge of a circle and you walked all the way around that circle, how far do you travel? Well, circumference is measured as 2 pi r, where r is the radius of that circle. And since we're talking about radians, that means our circles are going to have 2 pi radians. So you can, every radian is going to go all the way around until we hit 2 pi. So if 360 degrees has 2 pi radians and 180 degrees has pi radians, you can do the math and figure out that 90 degrees is going to be pi over 2 radians and so on and so forth. If you look at the sheet that I handed out to you, it actually says that on your unit circle that is there. On the inside of your unit circle, you have these, let me slide it up. You have these little pi's over two, pi over three, pi over four. Those are your radians. And next to that, you do have your degrees as well. But you do have your radians on the inside. The unit circle is very nice. So obviously, if we've been talking about um, our angles in terms of degrees, and now we're going to shift over and talk about them in radians, we're going to need to know how to convert from degrees to radians. So here we see that one degree is pi over 180 radians. The flip of that is one radian is 180 degrees divided by pi. Now, you may be tempted to write things in decimal form. That's not what you want to do here. You want to give the most accurate answer that you can, and so we're going to leave things in terms of pi. Okay? Kind of think of it like a variable. We're not going to change it. We're going to leave it as pi. So when we convert between degrees and radians, we will, if we're starting with degrees, we multiply the degrees by pi over 180 and simplify as needed. If we're given the radians, what we're going to do is we are going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Now, obviously, if a problem gives you decimals, you're going to probably get decimals out in the end. But what I meant by you don't want to give decimals is you don't want to convert that pi into 3.14 and try rounding and things like that. And if you have it in reading modes, it should leave your pi's alone if you're using your calculator.
to try some conversions. So if we're going from degrees to radians, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. And if we're going the opposite direction, from radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So let's convert 45 degrees into radians. Since we're going from degrees to radians, you're going to take your 45 and multiply that by pi over 180. Sorry, that went off a little bit. What we're really doing is something that's called conversion factors. You do this over in chemistry and biology a lot where you're converting between like feet and miles or liters and microliters and things like that. What we're doing is we're converting from degrees into radians. So if you type all that in, simplify it out, you're going to get pi over 4 radians. And if you eventually end up memorizing your unit circle, you would have that one memorized because that is one of the main um, angles. 30, 60, 90, 45 degrees. Really, once you get that memorized in the first quadrant, then all you're doing is changing the signs as you move around the circle. There's not a lot of work to show because I used a calculator for mine. So it doesn't matter if your degrees are positive or negative. You don't have to find a reference angle. You don't have to do any of that. You literally just multiply it and then simplify it out. Because you can have negative radians. Negative 3 pi over 2 radians. The zeros would cancel, and then you'd have 9 times 3 and 9 times 2. So the 9s would cancel, and you'd be left with 3 over 2. Now for C, they give you a decimal, and so you're going to probably get a decimal out. And that's OK. It will be very specific if you are given a decimal on how many places to round it to. It'll say one decimal place, two decimal place, the hundreds, the thousands. I'll go ahead and tell you I probably won't give you any that have a decimal on a test just because I don't like decimals. I like to encourage students not to use calculators as much as possible on things, and I feel like if you give decimals, everybody's automatic response is to use a calculator because I know I don't want to take 249.8 and divide it by 180 uh, old school long division way. Are there any questions about how we go from degrees to radians? It's not too bad, right? So the flip of that is, is if we're going from radians to degrees, we're literally flipping that fraction over. That pi over 180 is going to become 180 over pi. 9 pi is over 4 is going to be multiplied by 180 over pi. Notice that whenever you are going from radians to degrees, your pi's are going to cancel out. That's the whole reason we do it. The pi's go away, and that's going to leave us with a degree. And in this case, it's 405 degrees. Negative 5 pi over 6 times 180 over pi. Pi is cancel. You get negative 150 degrees. Now, on the last one, you're like, well, there's no pi. And you're right, because they gave you a decimal representation, which means this is the one time where when you type in pi, you're going to actually use pi as 3.14 or whatever your calculator estimates it out to be, because they're going to ask you for a decimal representation back. And again, I'm not going to give you anything with a decimal representation on a test, but it is good to see it, because you do encounter it. So in this case, it's 243.5 degrees. They could also ask you to give it in terms of degrees and minutes. So don't forget all the stuff that we've learned already just because we took a test. It's still all in play even as we progress on through this course. 
Are there any questions at all on how we do these conversions? Okay. Then I'm going to move this. Obviously, I gave you a handout that has a picture of the unit circle on it, so you do not need to feel like you need to copy it down again. If you so choose and you want to, you can. Um, you can also make copies, find other copies on the internet, however you like to do it. Um, this one's a little bit simpler in that it doesn't have the XY coordinates all the way around it. This just has the degrees and just has the radians. And so it has a little bit less information than the handout I gave you. So from here on, until further notice, if you are given an angle and it's given you a measurement, and there's no unit next to it, so it doesn't tell you degrees, it doesn't tell you anything else, then you need to assume that they are giving it to you in radians. I would say it's usually pretty obvious it's in radians because it's usually with a pi. And if you do decide to memorize the unit circle, these next few problems become that much easier. Because instead of having to do any type of conversion or factors or um, actually compute anything that we're going to see in the next couple examples, if you know that 45 degrees is pi over 4 and it's asking you for sine of pi over 4, then you should be able to come up with that. Um, on that handout I gave you, I did give you a couple of other tables, like the uh, trigonometric functions for 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, 30, 60, and 45. Uh, on the last test, I gave you kind of a cheat sheet on that, the 30, 45, and 60. I do kind of expect you that as we progress that I don't have to put as much on those little notes on the wall. So like that wouldn't be on the next test. So you'd be expected to know that or be expected to figure out that information using a calculator. I mean, if you type in sine of 30 degrees into your calculator, it's going to tell you that it's a half. But if you have it memorized, you can move that much quicker on to that problem. So let's do a couple of problems using radians. We are asked to find the tangent of 2 pi over 3. Now, if you memorize your unit circle and you're like, oh, I know this, and then you'll know it, and that's fine. If you don't, like right now, I'm not expecting anybody to have the unit circle memorized, then what we're going to have to do is we need to convert from radians to degrees so we can see what we're talking about. So the pi's would cancel, 3 would become 60. So really what it's asking us is it's asking us for the tangent of 220 degrees. And either you could type that in your calculator or you could know that 220 degrees is the same as like 60 degrees into the second quadrant and figure it up that way. Basically, everything on that additional handout that I gave you, bless you is very helpful in memorizing. Again, does your calculator tell you what tangent of 120 is? Absolutely. So sine of 3 pi over 2. Sorry, I think I went up too far for you on the wall. And if you prefer converting it over into degrees and then figuring it out, that's totally fine. That's how I'm going to do it all today. Pi is canceled, 2 and 180 becomes 90, so I'm asking for the sine of 270 degrees. What is the sine of 270 degrees? Negative 1. Good job. The last one is cosine of negative 4 pi over 3. Oops, let me write cosine right there. Pi 
pi is cancel. So that's cosine of negative 240 degrees. Again, you can think about that in terms of going clockwise 240 degrees and where you end up in finding the cosine, you can type it in your calculator and get negative one half. Are there any questions on what we're doing with these radians, on converting, on how we're finding the trigonometric function with these radians, any of this? Okay, that's actually 3.1. That's why we're doing 3.3 .3 as well with 3.1, because 3.1 doesn't take but 15 minutes to do. And 3.3 .3 is all over the unit circu circle and circular functions. And what we've been talking about right here and what you had in your notes is the unit circle. So it really goes hand in hand. Are we good if I take this off? Okay, so this unit circle is the exact unit circle that's on that handout. It's got the degrees, it's got the radians, it's got the x, y coordinates as well. It also tells you that the general equation for the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. But in this section, we are going to talk a little bit about circular functions, which really is just thinking about our trigonometric functions in terms of the unit circle. And the arc length of a circle is usually represented by an S and then equals R theta, where R is the radius. But what did I say is the radius for the unit circle? And if you don't know what the radius of the unit circle is, look at the equation of the circle. The equation of a circle is the X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. So what would be the radius? Yeah, the radius is 1. So since the radius is 1, then the arc length is just going to be whatever our theta is. That's what's really nice about the unit circle, is it tries not to get itself overly complicated in terms of having a radius of 2 or 4 or some other unit. So the radius of the unit circle will always be 1. That's why if we look over here, we have 1, 0 as our ordered pair, or 0, 1, all the way around on our quadrangle angles. Since you do have this unit circle in front of you, I am going to slide it up so you can see the other notes that are on here. Because the unit circle has a radius of 1, we can think about um, our trigonometric functions in terms of the arc length on the circle. Where sine of s, which is the arc length, equals y. This is using our x's and y's instead of our, like, Sakatoa. So if you have your sine, cosine, tangent, and all that jazz memorized with the x's and y's, hopefully this uh, makes a good connection for you. Cosine of s will just be x, and tangent of s will be y over x, obviously where x does not equal 0. And then you flip those for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. If you remember back from, I'm just going to slide up just a tiny bit so that you can see this paper. 
just from the last, you know, everything we've talked about so far, we talked about sine of theta, and then either we talked about it like opposite, I don't know why I wrote a, opposite over hypotenuse, or we could think about it as y over r. What this set up here is that our arc length is just equal to theta because our radius is 1. That's why it says sine of s. But really, that's the same thing as sine of theta because s equals theta. And then the other thing that makes it, like, it's just simplified because it's just y, and that's because our radius equals 1. And so that's why we don't say y over r when we're talking about our circular functions because in this case, our r is always 1. Now, obviously, when we inverse that and we flip it, we have to have 1 over y. But this is why it works. Nothing's changed except that we're thinking about theta as s instead of theta. The nice thing about this is that since a cosine of theta or cosine of s equals x and sine of s equals y, again, those are alphabetical, and since we were talking about this on the unit circle, meaning the radius is 1, then what we actually end up having is something known as the Pythagorean identity. This is where cosine squared of s, or of theta, plus sine squared of s, or theta, equals 1. And that's just by a simple substitution there. This will help you solve um, trigonometric equations later on. It also helps you later on when we start doing some proofs. And we'll use this to set things equal to each other and figure out our proofs. So this is a good identity to know. The remaining notes down here is just kind of telling you the range of values that you can get for x and y, or for cosine and sine, as it would be. Which, if you look at your unit circle and you think, OK, well, how big can my x's get, or how small can my x's get? They can only go from negative 1 to positive 1 because we're on a unit circle. We have to stay within that range. So that means that since x is the same thing as cosine of the uh, arc length, then it also has to stay between negative 1 and 1. And sine has to stay in between negative 1 and 1 for the same reasons. Um, there's been problems before where it asks you, can the sine of theta, if it's on the uh, unit circle, can it be 2? And it's true or false. Yes, it can be 2. No, it can't be 2. And if it's on the unit circle, it can't be 2 because it has to lay between that negative 1 and 1. Are there any questions on any of this information? It's really not new information in terms of the trigonometric functions. It's just kind of a slightly different way to look at them. We're being really intentional about thinking about them lying on the circle instead of just lying in a plane. And we're limiting them because we're saying that the radius has to be 1 instead of that the radius can be whatever the problem dictates. Good to keep going. Okay. I guess I just need to write them over here so I don't give you all the answers. We're going to find the exact values, and it says without a calculator. Now, how do I know if you're using a calculator or not? I don't. And I know y'all are going to use a calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do it without a calculator, because it says without a calculator. Okay, But again, if you use a calculator, I'm never going to know. So we need to find what sine of pi over 2 is. Well, how do we do that? If we know our unit circle, we can figure it out. We can convert it. But if you convert it, then what's going to happen is we're going to have to know what sine of like 270 is. 
And if you don't have that memorized, then that's not really going to help you. So here's kind of the way to look at these, if not using a calculator. Since sine equals, it's like sine of s equals the y value, okay? That's definition with our circular functions. Then what we need to know, the y value of 3 pi over 2. This is why if you memorize the unit circle, it gets to be really fast and really easy. Because if you know what the x and the y values are for 3 pi over 2, then right now you're done. You would know exactly what it is. And if you didn't, you could easily look at your unit circle table right now. You could look at your picture. Say, okay, 3 pi over 2, right? Yep. 3 pi over 2, that's down here. That's, that's 270. So what's the y value at 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. And that's because this is also the sine of 270. If you did the conversion, it would be either way. But the logic that it wants you to use is either to reference your unit circle or to memorize your unit circle so that when you see sine of pi over 3, you're like, well, okay, if every 90 degrees I'm at pi over 2, I'm going from 90 to 180 to 270, what is going to be the y value down there at 270? And it's going to be down at negative 1 because you're on the unit circle. Let's do another one. Cosine of 3 pi over 2. So we're talking about the exact same spot. We're at 3 pi over 2, but now we're talking about the cosine. Cosine is the x value. So what is the x value at 270? Zero. Because we are dealing, whatever. you can't see that. I'm trying to get both of it on there. And that's because it lays right on our y-axis. And if our radius only goes out one unit, then if we're on any of our axes, we're either going to be at 1, 0, or at 0, 1, or the negatives of those. Are there questions on how I'm figuring this stuff out? It takes time. Um, if you've never dealt with the unit circle before, it just takes some practice. Like I said, though, if you memorize 0 to 90, then whenever we're talking about 90 to 180, all we're doing is changing some signs. Because if I memorize the x, y coordinates for pi over 6, and then it asks me for the x, y coordinates or sine and cosine for 5 pi over 6, then what it's asking me for is the same values. It's just that when I'm in quadrant 2, my x's or my signs are going to become negative. My cosine stayed the same. The same thing if it asked me down here in 7 pi over 6. Well, now I'm in quadrant 3. X's and Y's are negative down there, so cosine and sine will be negative. Does that make sense? On how to read this and how it works? Oh, Let's do tangent of 3 pi over 2. Now, tangent is going to be y over x. So that's your sine value over your cosine value. Well, we found our sine value is negative 1, and our cosine is 0. So what is our tangent? Undefined. Undefined. You can never divide by 0. Never, ever. Questions, comments, concerns? The last ones, the last ones that you'll have examples like on your homework and stuff, are asking you to use the unit circle. So they want you to have the unit circle out in front of you to find these different values. And then we'll do D, which 
which I know you can't see yet. <laughs> Those first two, cosine of 7 pi over 4 and sine of 7 pi over 4, use the exact same point on our unit circle. <laughs> So if you look at your unit circle and you look around until you find 7 pi over 4, where does that take you? Like what quadrant? Yeah, it takes you to quadrant 4. Which degrees does it take it to? Can you tell? Um, it's actually going to be 315. So the degrees are kind of to the left. So, so I'm going to... Right down here, there's 7 pi over 4, so 315, just in case you needed to know. But then right here, this radical 2 over 2, comma, negative radical 2 over 2 is what we're going to be looking at. And so if it's asking for cosine, remember it's kind of alphabetical, cosine goes with x, sine goes with y. So if I'm looking for cosine of 7 pi over 4, that's going to be the x value, which is going to be radical 2 over 2. Sine is connected to the y value, and so the y value for 7 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. Now, if we look at C, it asks for tangent of negative 5 pi over 3. And if you look at your unit circle, there are no negatives in terms of the radians at all. So what do you think we need to do? How do we convert it? So you want to convert it into degrees? Okay, we can do that. Pi is cancel. We have 3, which becomes 60, which is tangent of negative 300 degrees. So we're not supposed to use a calculator, though. We're supposed to use our unit circle. So if I'm thinking about my circle and I'm going backwards 300 degrees, where am I going to end up? Yeah, I end up in the first quadrant. I end up at pi over 3. So this is the same thing as taking tangent of pi over 3. One way that you can do this without converting to, decimal, or converting to degrees again is you can actually add 2 pi to that negative 5 pi over 3, and that will get you to the positive. It's kind of like finding the reference angle using the radians. To find the reference angle using degrees, we would add 360 until we got to a positive value, and then that helped us to find out what that was. Here, you add 2 pi, because 2 pi is 360 degrees, and then that would get you to the positive, which is pi over 3. Now, tangent of pi over 3, you're like, well, on here, I have x's and y's. Okay, well, what is tangent in terms of x's and y's? in terms of x's and y's. Like, is it x over y or y over x or what? Yeah, it's going to be y over x. So then we can look at our unit circle and say, well, what is my y value? My y value is radical 3 over 2. And my x value is 1 half. Radical 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. And just like James said, radical 3. At least I think that's what you said. Oh, you said something different. Well, I was going to give you credit for it. You were close. So if it gives you a negative radian, feel free to add 2 pi until you get to a positive radian that then you can use your unit circle for. Last one, we have cosine of 2 pi over 3. Who wants to tell me what that is? If you're not sure, let's look at that bad boy. 
And let's look where 2 pi over 3 is. 2 pi over 3, it's right here. It's equivalent to 120 degrees. If I'm finding cosine, then I'm looking at the x value. So it's going to be negative 1 half. 